Welcome to another one of my watercolor pencil tutorials. Uh, this time we're going to be drawing and painting grapefruit. I'm almost finished sketching out my grapefruit. And grapefruit is a really simple shape. We've got a circle and a half circle. And then I'm dividing um, it into some different sections. Uh, after I'm done sketching it out, I'm using my Prismacolor watercolor pencils. Some of the colors I'm using today are Spanish orange, light peach, pink. I'm also using carmine red and sunburst yellow. Since I don't have a Prismacolor watercolor pencil that's the exact color that I want, I'm gonna be layering colors together to create that nice ruby red grapefruit color. And so by mixing my light red and my oranges and my yellows together, I'm going to create that color. After I'm done layering the colors together, I'm going to go back and emphasize some darker edges and leaving the center of the sections uh, a little bit lighter and letting some of the white paper show through. I put a layer of pink um, on the grapefruit slices and now I'm going over with a little bit of a light peach um, and I'm just layering just a little bit, not putting it on too heavy or too saturated. And then I'm going to use some carmine red, which really looks more like a light red. And I'm going to emphasize those edges just a little bit more. Okay, it's time to blend those colors together. This time I'm using a flat paintbrush, which has a really nice blunt edge, which is great for doing something that's a little bit of a cleaner line, which I need to do on the grapefruit for the individual sections. I am also don't need a lot of water on my paintbrush, and so I'm using a flat paintbrush for the edging, but it also doesn't hold too much water. I don't wanna water it down a whole lot. If I wanted to add a lot of water and make it a very watery, uh, blended look, I would use a, a round paintbrush that holds more water in the bristles. So I'm cleaning my paintbrush many times. I don't wanna drag that pigment all over the place. So every time I blend up an area, I'm gonna clean my paintbrush, wipe it off, just get a little bit of water and keep blending. I don't want to overwork it because um, I still want the middle section to be a little bit lighter and the edges to be a little bit darker. Okay, I'm using my Spanish orange to start shading in the skin of the grapefruit. I am going to make the edges a little bit darker, leaving a little bit of white paper showing through on the center. And when I do the section that is face on, facing us, I'm gonna do the very outer edge and I'm gonna leave some white space between the slices of the grapefruit and the skin. If you ever look at a grapefruit that's been sliced open, you'll see that it's almost, it's not quite white, but there's a, there's a little bit of a lighter, almost white um, area that separates uh, between the grapefruit sections and the skin. So it's very yellow right now. I'm not finished. I'm gonna be adding some more colors as soon as I'm done. Okay, I've added some carmine red on top of that Spanish orange, and I blended it up just a little bit. I'm leaving it a little bit lighter in the center to give that illusion of roundness on the grapefruit. And I'm just gonna keep very carefully blending. Remember, I don't want to blend all the colors together because they'll give it a very flat look. Okay, I'm starting my second layer on the grapefruit slices and I'm adding a little bit of the sunburst yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, carmine red and I'm trying to create that nice ruby red grapefruit color on the inside. And I'm just gonna keep layering and creating the textures that I'm trying to achieve that most resemble a grapefruit.
When blending the colors of watercolor pencils with your paintbrush and water, make sure that your paint strokes are in the same direction as your pencil strokes. You never want to go against the grain or in the opposite direction, and you want to clean your paintbrush frequently as you're blending uh, the colors. Okay, now I'm going to take my Carmine Red pencil, dip it in my water for just a little bit, and this will create some nice vibrant marks where I want to add some details. And when you're doing this technique, make sure that you don't soak your pencil in water for a long period of time. You're just dipping it in the water just for a few seconds, maybe five to 10 seconds. Um, and then it will last for a little bit, but you'll have to redip it in water if you want to continue making vibrant marks. This is a great technique for adding details that you really want to stand out. And one thing I forgot to mention is that if there's any areas that are too wet or have too much paint on it, you can always take a paper towel and blot up any areas. Um, this will help keep things clean and not too saturated. You may have noticed that I'm using a really small paintbrush for some details. Um, before when I went in with my pencil and added some details, I wanted to blend it just a little bit. So I used a really tiny paintbrush with just a little bit of water to go in and blend those details. I've decided to use indigo as my shadow and my base for this painting. Um, this dark blue I think will look really nice against this grapefruit color and really make it stand out. Okay, it's time to blend my shadow and my base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a nice wet paintbrush and I'm gonna push that pigment towards the grapefruit. I want the color to be darkest right underneath the grapefruit. So to create that nice shadow on your objects, you don't wanna start at the top and pull the pigment down. You wanna make sure that you're pushing all the darkest pigment against your objects at the base. And this will create a nice shadow effect. Okay, I'm gonna take some of my indigo pigment and I'm gonna add a shadow on one of my grapefruits. Uh, there should be a shadow cast on it from the other grapefruit leaning against it and this is just a great technique. Okay, I'm using my Jelly Roll white gel pen to add some highlights. This is a great tool to use when adding highlights over any drawing or painting. It's a fine tip so you can do some really nice details. Okay, I'm just putting in some final details here and there. I'm just about finished and I hope that you learned something today. Um, thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please leave them in comments below. Thank you so much.